As the threat of attack from Iran grows stronger, Israel is keeping a close eye on Tehran's most powerful proxy army, Hezbollah, in southern Lebanon. The IDF in northern Israel has switched from defense mode to attack mode. George Thomas has more from the border city of Kiryat Shimona. Toby Abutbul knows just how fortunate he is to be still alive. February 13th at 11.08 in the morning, Abutbul was driving down Main Street in Kiryat Shimona, a city in northern Israel near Lebanon's border, when his car's dash cam captures the moment a Hezbollah missile lands a few feet away from him. I was driving on the streets of the city and an anti-tank missile hits right in front of me with no warning. There wasn't even a siren sound warning of an incoming missile. He immediately stops, puts his car in park, turns on the hazard lights, jumps out and takes cover behind his car. Ten seconds later, the second missile hits, injuring a mother and her child. And then come the sirens. Three months earlier, on November 2nd, Hezbollah launched a barrage of 12 missiles at northern Israel, two of the missiles hitting right next to Abbot Bull's restaurant. Surveillance video shows the moment his father and two siblings enter the family restaurant and the missile's impact fling them to the floor, but not seriously injured. It was scary. My little sisters and father were here with me, but we quickly got into the bunker and we understood that there's no room for playing games. This is very serious. Five months later, he's nervous about what's coming. I believe Israel and Hezbollah are going to go to war. The traffic lights here in downtown Kiryat Shamona are blinking because there's, as you can see, hardly any traffic to speak of. It's a scene that is played out pretty much all along the Israel-Lebanon border. Some 60,000 Israelis forced to evacuate from cities like this. But, you know, back in 2006, when Israel and Hezbollah were last at war, the circumstances and the situations were much different. And today, Hezbollah is a much more powerful army. What is different about this conflict compared to 2006? Hezbollah is different. Hezbollah is much stronger, mm -hmm. much more munition, accurate missiles, and a capability of invasion. Former IDF intelligence officer Sarid Zahavi is a leading expert on Hezbollah. She's tracked the various weapons being used by the terror group here in the north since October 8th, the day after the Hamas massacre. In addition to more than 3,000 rockets, Zahavi says for the first time Hezbollah began firing more advanced Iranian-made weapons like the Almas-1 anti-tank guided missile. Low flying, long, long flying, short range, very accurate, no alerts, no Iron, iron Dome cannot intercept Israel this. Israel cannot protect itself from the infra... Only, only if they are launched against tanks, but they are usually launched against... So everything else, nations. everything, not, not just, Correct. everything, Correct. civilian, military, whatever. Yeah. In January, Hezbollah released this video, reportedly showing an Alma-1 with a camera attached to its nose, targeting an IDF intelligence base. Instead of a terrorist organization, we are facing a terrorist army, army that has around 200,000 different kind of missiles, drones, rockets, mortars, different types can get to everywhere in Israel. Hezbollah is also believed to have about 100,000 fighters. Hundreds of Hezbollah terrorists took part in what they described as a military maneuver. The so-called tip of Hezbollah's spear is the Radwan force, an elite squad of up to 3,000 fighters focused on infiltrating Israel's northern border. Since they participated in the civil war in Syria, their uh, ground forces are much more professionals, much more equipped and even, you know what, even motivated uh, to carry out the ground invasion because, you know, during the years, Hezbollah mobilized them that this is their mission. IDF released video of a strike in South Lebanon that allegedly took out a senior Radwan commander. Fighter jets also struck a reported Radwan military compound. Since Hezbollah opened the northern front against Israel, IDF attacked 4,000 targets in Lebanon. 10% of these are against the commando units of Hezbollah. This is a very impressive number. 
Zahavi says a major challenge the IDF would face in a full-scale war would be trying to identify Hezbollah foot soldiers and weapons depots. As CBN discovered on a recent trip inside South Lebanon, the terror group is very adept at hiding within the civilian population. Hezbollah, like Hamas, is entrenched in the villages using the Lebanese human shields. Everything you saw happening in Gaza with regard to uh, hiding the munition in the hospitals and in the mosques and in the homes, it exists the same way with Hezbollah. Israeli military has announced it's preparing to move from defense to attack regarding operations on the northern border. Experts predict war between Hezbollah and Israel is likely within the next six to eight months. I know the IDF is here. Yeah. I know that we are much more prepared than we used to be. Mm -hmm. But, and yet I'm worried. Zahavi's home here in northern Israel sits less than five miles from Hezbollah military positions. We are not willing to sleep next to this monster anymore. We want the threat to be dealt because what we have learned that once they have the capability to slaughter us, eventually they will use this capability. The only way to fight this is to try to eliminate or at least damage as much as possible this capability. George Thomas, CBN News, Northern Israel. This will probably be the next front in this war and, and will, will come sooner rather than later. And it is a long history of conflict with various terror, terror groups, all going back to when the PLO was kicked out of Jordan. They tried to overthrow the king, and so they got kicked out, and they uh, moved into Lebanon. Lebanon said, we know how to... Uh, have, have everybody get along. We've got Muslims, we've got Christians, we have Jews, we're, we're, we're the jewel of the Mediterranean, and they've completely destroyed Lebanon. And in that, Israel has invaded numerous times, the most recent one being back in 2006. There was a withdrawal from Gaza, there was a withdrawal from Lebanon, all with promises from the international community, we will help you keep the peace. Now, in southern Lebanon, the UN had a mandate, and that mandate you may not have ever heard of, United Nations Interim Force in Lebanon. Uh, UNIFIL is the, the shorthand for that. There is supposed to be an international armed force to create a buffer zone between uh, the radical forces, the Muslims and the, that want to terrorize Israel, and Israel. There's supposed to be a peace zone that no weapons are allowed in. And here you see Hezbollah armed to the teeth with a tunnel complex that rivals the tunnel complex in Gaza, entrenched and uh, unfortunately more sophisticated weapons than Hamas could even dream of. These are guided missiles, they're infrared missiles, all of this threatening the civilian population that has to be evacuated. What country can live under those conditions? Uh, it, 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 to live under constant terror, you never know when a rocket's going to blow up. You know, you're just trying to work at a restaurant and rockets are going off in the street. It, it, the, the UN mandates are a joke. And so when you hear about UN, well, we want to stop the humanitarian crisis in Gaza, well, you are part of creating it. And, and you were supposed to have a mandate in southern Lebanon and you have abdicated what the international community should be doing. So Israel is going to be forced to act because of these things. It's, it's incredible to me that the international community is now blaming Israel and using words like genocide and apartheid and repeating it over and over and again as if it was some, tr some great truth. That's not the truth at all. The truth is these radical Muslims want to wipe Israel off the map. They want to destroy every, everything about Israel, and they want to kill all the Jews. The genocide is on the other side. It's not in Israel. If you're a Muslim in Israel, you have the full right to vote. You can participate in the government. You can have employment. You're a full citizen. All of these things. But if Hezbollah takes over, if Hamas takes over, well, you can expect a slaughter and every single Jew will be their target. They've said it over and over and over again. It's time for us all to believe it.